Is Cinesteel 400D a replacement for the legendary Natura 1600 color film? That is a question I'll be exploring in this video. I'm going to give you an overview of both Cinesteel 400D and Fujifilm Natura 1600. I'll show you the results of two more rolls of 400D that I shot at ISO 1600. And at the end, I'll talk about the reasons why you'd want to choose 400D over Natura any day of the week. Cinesteel 400D is my favorite new film. Yes, I know that I've said in other videos that Adox Color Mission was my new favorite film, but I've changed my mind and not for the reason I thought I would. I ordered a couple of bricks of the film and it arrived in late May. I had wasted no time in getting out there and shooting it. And you can see that my past results from this film in two of my popular videos on this channel. I shot my first roll at box speed ISO 400 in my Fujifilm Class S and the second roll I stuck an ISO 1600 sticker on it and shot it in my Natura F1.9 camera. Although I love the images from the roll that I shot at box speed, I was blown away with the images I got when I rated it at ISO 1600 and had the lab push it two stops. I posted the images up to Facebook, Instagram and also to Twitter and on Twitter my friend Bill2 wrote this. I've been missing an alternative to Natura 1600 and Matt may have just found it for me. So what is Fujifilm Natura and why do low light, dusk and night shooters love this film so much? Natura 1600 was Fujifilm's high speed color negative film. It was also known by the name Superior 1600 in North America. It was produced from 1998 until 2017 and since its discontinuation there's really been nothing like it. Natura was known for its natural skin tones and beautiful color palette, which was a little bit softer than many other color negative films. It was also well known for being relatively fine grain for a 1600 speed film. Now being a high speed color negative film, it was a little bit pickier than many other consumer and professional color negative films. For example, it didn't really like overexposure. There was no sort of performance gain by overexposing this film. And if you underexpose the film, well, you're going to see a lot of grain in the shadows. Natura had Fujifilm's fourth cyan color layer, which improved color reproduction under fluorescent lights. It also featured nano structured grain technology, crystals that were 60% thinner, yet more uniform in size to achieve sharp and smooth image quality. So that sounds pretty good. Can Cinesteel 400D really compete with Natura 1600? Let's find out. I've already posted one video on this channel where I rated 400D at ISO 1600 and asked my lab to push it two stops. Like I said, I was blown away by these images. So I went out and shot two more rolls like that. I shot the first roll in my Contax T3 and I shot another roll in my Fujifilm Natura F1.9 camera to see if I could recreate the magic. So neither of these cameras has a film speed selector, so I had to fool them into thinking they were shooting high speed film. I stuck an ISO 1600 sticker on both canisters of CineSteel 400D, and when I loaded them up, I was good to go. Now, if you're new to pushing color film or you're new to high speed color films, you might be wondering, well, why would you do this? Why would you take a 400 speed film and rate it at ISO 1600 and push it two stops? It sounds like a lot of hassle. The easy answer is that if you rate a film at ISO 1600, you're able to walk around with a small little point and shoot and take images in low light situations where ordinarily you just would not be able to take those photos. You'd either need a tripod or you'd need to use a flash. If you didn't do either of those, you'd end up with very blurry pictures. So in short, rating this film at 1600 and getting it pushed two stops by your lab means that you can keep shooting with a small handheld point and shoot way after other people have packed up and gone home. So first, let's have a look at the images from the Contax T3. Now I've got the contact sheet here. It is looking pretty good. I took a lot of these photos with the T3 to really try and push the limits of this film. I took a lot of the images when it was really dark, just to see how it would really perform under those low light situations. So the first image here, I absolutely love. It's down by the Cleveland Lighthouse, and you've got this little restaurant here which sells fish and chips and gelato, and you've got these beautiful palm trees that are like above the, uh, above the restaurant, and I really like this image. You've got the nice sort of purple colors there in the background of the reverse sunset, 
and you know this is handheld and it looks fantastic you can see the lights there of the, the fish and chippery and yeah i really like this image i think the contax d3 did really well in that situation the next couple of shots are at dusk also down by cleveland there was a beautiful sunset it was really amazing and i was down there at the water and look at the sky and the, the colors from the the clouds and the, the sunlight it looks really beautiful and there's this silhouette of the dock there i really like that image the next one is the same place, but it's a bit further back and you can actually see there was a guy there, a fisherman who was throwing nets out into the water and I had to stand there for about five minutes to, to, to make sure that I got the good shot of him throwing the net in the water just when I wanted him to. So I really like that image. I think it looks fantastic as well. Another shot here of the same location. I really like the silhouette of the fence down there to the waterline. And I think the colors here look great. You know, you've got these sort of very bright sunset colors, but you've also got the purples and the yellows. It looks really nice. And the final one at this location, I mean, it's almost dark at this stage. It's just this glow. The sun's gone down and there's just this glow from the horizon. But I think that the results here look really good. For at a time when it was almost dark, I think this looks like a really good photo as well. Now we're over at Wynnum, one of my favorite photo haunts. And this was just a train passing by the level crossing. This is handheld and I really like the colors here. You know, you've got some sharpness in the photos. Certain elements of the photo that were staying still are in sharp focus, but the rest of the scene is just like blurring on by that train's barreling down the track. So I really like the colors and the way that looks on film. Opposite the train station is this uh, shop. You might have seen it before in some of my other videos. I took this image, I don't know why, I've taken this shot a few, quite a few times, but I thought this would make a good sort of comparison with some of my other shots. Again, it was almost dark here, but look at that. I think that looks fantastic. You've got the golden glow, you've got the purples in the background. It's a really nice image. Again, this is a similar photo to other ones I've showed you in the past. This is of this train station looking towards the, the westerly direction with the sunset glow in the background there. I think that looks really nice as well. And then to finish off this sort of uh, images on this roll, I've got some Chinese restaurant photos. So this is one of the Chinese restaurants I walked by. I sort of stooped in the doorway there and took this photo of the menu. I really like this. You can see the sort of old school kind of architecture of the restaurant. You've got the menu board at the front there. Mmm, honey chicken, yum. So yeah, I really like this photo. And it was, again, it's quite dark. There's only a bit of lighting here from the fluorescent lights. I think it looks fantastic. This is the same restaurant. Uh, just from the side there and you can sort of see the glow in the windows there and some fluorescent lights up above and then then towards the sort of sunset you've got this sort of you know yellow bright glow and you can see some traffic lights there as well i think that's a really nice image and this is exactly what you want to do with a film when you're shooting it at night you want to be able to shoot it in these conditions when it's almost dark there's just a bit of ambient light whether it's natural light or artificial light and being able to take these photos I love this. This is one of my, I'm in my element when I'm walking around at this time of night taking photos. I love it. Here's a couple of shops that are further down the road here. You've got this Wynnum, another Chinese restaurant. I can't actually read it because I haven't got my glasses on. What does it say? Wynnum Garden Chinese Restaurant, I think it says. I really like this. You've got little fairy lights in the window, then you've got that glow coming over the top of the building. So it looks maybe a little bit underexposed, but I, I still like it. I think it looks very atmospheric. And for the last image, we've got Perry's Fresh Fruit Market. I really like this. I was walking on by and there was just these lights from the fruit market. There was people working and you had the glow in the background. And yeah, really nice mix of sort of natural and artificial lighting here. So I took this at maybe F4. Really like this image. I think it looks fantastic on this film. If you're enjoying this video, I've got a favor to ask. If that subscribe button is still red down below, give it a tap. Subscribe to my channel. There's plenty more good reviews coming up about film photography right here. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, an easy and free way to do so is give this video the thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Now, the second roll of images I've got to show you are from my Fujifilm Natura camera. And I loaded CineSteel 400D in there, rated it at ISO 1600 through a DX code sticker, same as the contacts, and I asked my lab to push it two stops. Here are the results from that roll. So again, you've got this contact sheet and the contact sheet here for the Natura camera looks fantastic. This is sort of more typical of a pushed color negative contact sheet that I like to see. You've got these, you know, again, these dark sort of scenes punctuated by light and these really bright, vibrant colors, really nice contrast, nice saturation. I think just from this contact sheet, I know there's gonna be some good images on here. So let's take a look. 
The first one here is at the sea at Wynnum. Just looking out to sea at Moreton Bay there, there's like this, it's not a jetty, it's not, a, I don't know what it is. It's just like a walkway out to this sort of pontoon kind of thing where you can go for a walk and fish. But I really love this. I think it looks fantastic. The sea looks kind of still and the colors on the horizon look really nice. So yeah, I really like that. The next image again is here in Wynnum. And this is somewhere I've photographed a gazillion times. I really love this scene. And I think, you know, 400D has done a fantastic job here. The fairy lights and the, the mural on the wall, the sky, everything looks fantastic. The color, the saturation, the contrast, that is such a beautiful image. That's one of my favorite images of that scene and I've taken a lot. Again, this is a scene that I've taken a lot. It's Wynnum Central train station. I focused there on the, the lights of the level crossing. And look at those colors. I, I just think, I love pushing color negative film. I think that is a really fabulous picture. Just the way that all those beautiful color elements that are combined to make that scene, it looks really nice. So you might be noticing that I'm showing you photos I've taken before. Well, I did try to take new photos when I was walking around Wyndham and I found two new locations. So this first one here, it was actually really dark by this stage. It was like the sun had gone down. There was no glow from the sunset, but I found this old shop, a boot and shoe repair shop. And I was sort of looking at the shop thinking, what am I gonna do here? And then I saw the sort of display in the window and I thought, yeah, that looks like it is photo worthy. So I took a photo there and I really like it. You can sort of see a hat and some kind of basket or something and there's some kind of old sewing machine. And I really like the old style, the lettering on the old sign there. I think that looks really nice. It actually turned out way better than I thought it would. I thought it might not be too dark or underexposed, but it looks absolutely perfect to me. This next image also turned out way better than I thought. This is just some little brick building in Wyndham. I don't even know what's in the building or what it's used for, but it was pitch black dark at this stage and the only light was from that fluorescent light. And I took the image thinking, this isn't gonna turn out, this is a waste of film. And I was pleasantly surprised. I really love this. I love the glow of the fluorescent light there and the nice sort of color of the brickwork and the yellow sort of lines on the ground there. I, I think this re looks really, really nice. And if you are looking for a film that you can shoot at night, 400D is definitely a fantastic choice. I also took some daylight photos using this roll. And the first one here is the Montezuma's restaurant at Capalaba. I think it's been used in some uh, TV productions actually. And uh, yeah, I really like this for a few different reasons. First of all, the colors look fantastic, the blues and the yellows. You've got this sort of golden light from the, the sunset hitting the, the roof there. But also I like the sort of speed bumps, you know, the, the black and yellow speed bumps sort of leading you into the photo. I think that looks really nice and I'm really happy with how that turned out. The next one at Capalaba are these palm trees. Now, of course, I'm using the Natura camera here. It has a 24 mil focal length, very wide focal length for point and shoot. So I'm looking at these three trees, I'm looking upwards and look how big and tall, I mean, they are pretty big and tall, but you know, I think how big and tall they are is accentuated by this focal length. And I think they look absolutely fantastic. You've just got the, the sunlight hitting them there just before the sun goes down and the colors, the greens and the blues and the yellows look really nice. This one again is at Capalaba after the sun had gone down. There's just some industrial buildings there and the sort of the telephone wires. And you've got this deep sort of you know, Brisbane winter sunset there, the yellows and the reds and the oranges. It looks incredible. These next two, I hope my daughter's not watching. She's gonna kill me. She asked me to take some photos of her at Ikea and I took these two photos. The first one here is in the car park, uh, natural light. And I think she looks, well, she looks a bit grumpy, but um, she's gonna kill me. She's gonna kill me. Skin tones are looking really good. And this next one here is inside Ikea. Of course, she's under a lamp here, very sort of heavy sort of fluorescent lighting. It, it looks different, put it that way. I think, you know, the lighting there makes her skin look very yellow. So, you know, is 400D as good for portraits under fluorescent lighting as Natura? Jury's out on that one. This is not exactly a scientific test, but I'd be certainly keen to shoot some more portraits on 400D and see what it's like under these conditions. The next couple of shots are of autumn leaves in winter. Yes, we don't have many trees like this in Australia. So I had to, when I saw these leaves falling, these beautiful leaves, I had to go out and take a bunch of photos. We don't have many trees like this. So there's these beautiful kind of, you know, Canadian, North American kind of leaves, um, you know, beautiful yellow and orange colors. And uh, this one's just looking straight into the tree sort of thing with the blue in the background of the sky. I really like this because sometimes when I look at the image, I can't work out whether I'm looking at a bunch of leaves in a puddle or something or am I looking at leaves on, on a tree so yeah I really like that one and the next one is there was a there's a car park there 
and I just took an image there of all the nice leaves on the, on the what do you call it? The windscreen of the car there. And I, I made sure that I had some leaves sort of poking in on the side there to give it more of a, an autumn-y feel, although it technically was winter. Two more shots to show you on this roll. I've got this nice image of the uh, Raby Bay here, all the restaurants at Raby Bay. You've probably seen that little car there before, the little Fiat on the right hand side. Again, it was almost dark here, but look, I think this almost looks like daytime. I think the, the Natura and City Steel 400D have done a fantastic job here. And the last image is probably my favorite on the roll. I took a few different photos of this. You might've seen on the contact sheet, if you paused, paused it on the contact sheet. This is just a, a car in, uh, in Cleveland. That, that building there on the left is an old garage where they fix up cars. And that car was just parked there one day and I was like, wow, this looks fantastic. I love that old Datsun. I love the, the old building and all the nice little plants there. And there's like a bit of a roof overhead. And of course you've got this red glow of the sun rising. So yeah, I really love that image and I've had a lot of, uh, what do you call them? Um, compliments, I've had a lot of compliments on that image on Instagram. So yeah, I really love that one. It's one of my favorites. So is CineSteel 400D a replacement for Fujifilm's Natura and Superior 1600 films? I think it is and I'm gonna tell you why. First of all, availability. Natura was discontinued in 2017 and the amount of stock that's out there for Natura is slowly dwindling. CineSteel 400D is a brand new film. If you didn't order at the pre-launch, you probably can't get any yet unless you buy of someone who did. So although there may not be a lot of stock of 400D to purchase freely at the moment, I expect probably by later this year, there's gonna be a lot on the market. So look out for future releases from CineSteel through their website. And when you see some for sale, make sure you get on there and grab some. So the second reason is price. Because it was discontinued and stocks of the film have been dwindling, the price for Natura or Superior 1600 is going up as almost as high as FP100C pack film. Stocks of the film regularly sell for over 80 or 100 US dollars, which is a little bit crazy really. Unfortunately, color negative film and high speed color negative film does not age that well. So it seems kind of weird paying that much money for this film. On the other hand, Cine Steel 400D, when you can buy it, is around 15 US dollars a roll plus tax and shipping. Now it's not the most cheapest color negative film uh, it's ever been released in the last few years, but hey, look, I think it's a good price. I think the product is fantastic. And of course we have to support these new films to make sure they keep making new and fresh film for us. The third reason is freshness. Now this is a no brainer. Which one are you gonna choose? Are you gonna choose the five year old Natura or Superior 1600? Even if it's been in the fridge, it's not exactly factory fresh. Or are you gonna choose Cine Steel 400D, which has just rolled off the production line? I know which one I'll be choosing. The fourth reason is the color. The reason that you choose 400D over Natura is for those bold, bright, dynamic colors when you rate it at ISO 1600 and have it push two stops. They look fantastic. I would choose this film over Natura just because of the colors. Of course, Natura was well known for its natural skin tones. And when I've taken people's shots on 400D at ISO 1600, they look good. I mean, is it as good as Natura? I don't know because I haven't done as much testing, but they look pretty good to me from the shots I've taken. The fifth and final reason why you'd choose 400D over Natura is because of the grain. Yes, the grain on 400D is very, very fine shot at box speed. And even when pushed to ISO 1600, it looks fantastic. You like the grain is not that perceptible. I mean, if you zoom in, of course it's there, but really it's not an issue at all, which is I found kind of surprising. In fact, this is one of the reasons, the colors and the grain is probably one of the reasons why I would shoot 400D at ISO 1600 at nighttime any day of the week over Natura. Now all of these reasons assume that you're rating 400D at ISO 1600 and you're either developing at home with a two stop push or you're sending it to a lab and you're asking them to push it two stops for you. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed those two rolls of Cine Steel 400D that I shot at ISO 1600 and had pushed two stops by my lab. I think the photos at dusk and nighttime look absolutely fantastic, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think? Do you think the shots look good? Is this a replacement for Natura? And when you get your hands on CineSteel 400D, will you be pushing it a couple of stops? Please give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below.